Hello everybody. Today I wanted to uh, show you how I made my Pennsylvania Railroad style catenary wire. Um, I grew up on the Northeast Corridor and every day at the time was I saw GG once. So I fell in love with that engine ever since I was a child. Um, right now I have three. I have two Bachman um, with DCC, which um, I highly recommend. They, they are great runners. They sound great. Um, this one here particularly is the Cato version. I installed DCC in this. Um, I want to show you how I did this. Now, the reason that I did do it because I actually years ago had an HO layout and I had my entire double track main was, was done at the catenary, basically done the same way I did, did it here. Um, I just cannot stand to see um, a GG1 running around on a layout with the, uh, the pantograph just scraping the air. I just, I just, I just can't, can't see that. So I pretty much had to do the catenary for the prototype and it was well worth the effort. It took quite a while to do. I'll be honest, it's very tedious. It's um, challenging at times, uh, especially with the soldering, which is, I'm not a, I never claimed to be a good solderer or whatever you want to call it, but if you stick to it, you can get it, and the end result is really great. So let me get started here and show you how I did this. Um, I started with, I guess you could see it well enough. Um, I can't zoom in anymore. I'll be really looking crazy. So let me uh, explain what I used so I give you an idea of what it took. Now, the actual wire that's on that the, that the pantograph will actually come in contact with is the fine wire on the bottom. Okay, that is uh, that is made by Titchy Train Group. Okay, and the size is point zero one zero. It's phosphor bronze wire. Now it comes in. A three foot section so that worked out quite well because the originals that I found uh, made by the same came this big so I had my local hobby shop guy order me the the long ones he got in the catalog and saw that they made it also to three foot so it basically saved me from adding these this soldering these all the way down the line so that that was not going to happen so with the three foot section that worked out well so what i also what i did the the second wire which is again they come in these three foot tubes uh made by the same titchy churning group this is point zero three two okay now this one is going to be well it also is is it's the wire here let me see if I can get a little pointer or something here so you can see it a little better so this one here is the 032 okay that's the bigger one now also the same size wire the 032 is also going to be the wire that supports this section here so what I did was I measured out what I did was I measured out after I after I put these together soldered them together so I got it down ready to go it's now time for the next section so I went to 18 inches which is the center so let's see if I can get it to 18 inches and I'll just pinch it right about there it's about right so I took 18 inches and then I bent the wire down Okay, now what this is doing, this is simulating where the center 
pole was going to be because the wire, the pole holds it up here, the wire droops down and goes on its way. And then when it comes to the end of the, um, the section, see, basically I did my, between my poles is basically 18 inches. So that um, prototypically, I don't know the exact footage, but by watching videos, it's basically the length of two passenger cars between poles, at least of what I've seen. So I just went with that. So it may be, you know, off scale a little, but the, if, if you're, you know, really particular about inches and centimeters and eighths of an inch and all that, that's, that's entirely up to you. You can, you can research it and find out what exactly that is. I, I actually couldn't even find out what that is. So I kind of just flew by the seat of my pants here on that one. So this one here has been up a little too much. So basically what it's going to be is when I do this, it's going to be at 18 inches. So right there in the center is where that would be. And as you can see, it would, let me use a little pointer here. It will, 18 inches, and then it droops down like this, and then it will pretty much even out. And then as it comes to the end, it's going to loop up again. So at each, at each 18 inches, it comes up to a point like this, okay? So here's one that's finished to give you an idea of. I'm not going to give soldering lessons and get into all that because it's too time consuming. But anyway, you get to get the idea. Now here is the one that's finished. Right there. This one is finished. There's my 18 inch center. See how it came down. It evens out and then it'll go back up. And this is where it'll meet the next pole be soldered here and continue on its way so there's an 18 inch center right there it's kind of hard to see with the oxidized wire against this white but it didn't work out the other way when i had a brown background because then you couldn't see the wire so basically that's what it is right there okay so it's just if you're fluent in soldering, it's it's not that difficult. Um, it can be trying at times because sometimes it'll stick the first time, sometimes it won't. So just you know, if if you're an avid Pensy fan and you want to run electrics, then the end result of this is is fantastic. So what I did was when I did the wire, I measured from whoop, where's my GG one? There we go. I measured from the top of the rail to the top of the pantograph in end scale and the position of the pantograph, the height of the pantograph, because this pantograph can actually go higher. But, and, and even in prototype, I've seen them running all the way up. They look, to me, it looks crazy and there's not too many areas uh, maybe in switching yards, I think I've seen them mostly where the pantograph is up for clearance for whatever cranes or whatever's coming in the area that's, that's high. So I kind of went with, this is about three quarters of an inch up between here and here. And that's a pretty prototypical height. I like that because um, I didn't want it down too far. Um, I, and also what I did was these pantographs come now they're not this one in particular i haven't done it to this one yet but my bachman's i get i get the pantograph where i want it and i took a little bead of solder and just hit it right on one of these joints and it pretty much kept it at that height so i don't have to worry about it creeping up and then snagging and then tearing the pantograph off so I did the same thing uh, in, when I did this in HO. I did the same thing with my key import GG1s. I just uh, put a little data solder on there and it keeps it right where you want it. You don't have to worry about it ever snagging and your wire is not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay the same. Wherever you decide to put it, the height, it's going to it's gonna stay there. Now what I did was when, I, when it's all said and done, 
I get all the wire in place. I get everything at the two inch height. So the bottom wire basically to the top of the rail is going to be two inches. So basically it's going to be two inches to the bottom of the wire here. So after I got it in, there's still fine tuning that needs to be done. Sometimes the poles might have to be lowered. They might have to be raised up just to get it exactly perfect. So depending on how you're putting it down, especially when I do the, I'll explain after I'm done how I did these poles, but here's one of the poles and you know, you've got my concrete uh, footer right there. So sometimes you have to maybe build it up, take it down, depending on the contour of your layout, you might, it might not be perfect, you know, flat. So you're going to have to adjust this accordingly to keep that at two inches from the rail to the bottom of the wire. So you got to keep in mind that you don't want to measure, you know, from here because you, you want to measure from here, not here. Because this is what's going to be at the high highest point right there. It's going to be at the highest point. So you want two inches basically. Let me get a better, better shot here. You want two inches from the bottom of the wire to the top of your rail. Just remember two inches. That, that works. Now, if you want to make it higher, you can make it higher depending on or lower depending on how you want to run your pantograph. So that that's entirely up to you. But I, I went with two inches, which works out good. And it's a good prototypical height. So that's what I went with. Okay, so here we go. Here's the finished product. You can see how I have both wires hung. The panograph is just barely touching. It will be fine-tuned. Especially down towards the um, entrance of the station down there, the underground. It will be tweaked and fine-tuned. So. Again, these are my Bachman GG1s with sound value. Uh, they run fantastic. I'll probably end up with uh, a couple of more. A couple more anyway. So. Sound is great. The horn is really good. I mean, I really like the sound of that horn. It's loud. That's me bumping the camera up against the one pole. That's why the catenary was shaking. But there you have it. There's the finished product. It goes around. It goes under my signal tower. It looks great. And it still leaves you plenty of room for track cleaning under there. You have all the space. I have an automatic track cleaner anyway, so. There it is. And looks great. Now, before I go, um, when I did this in HO, it was, you know, larger. And I, I had put little insulators in for detail. I couldn't find anything that small for, for this end scale. So, you know, I just had to, you know, an end scale, you have to sacrifice some detail sometimes. So in the perfect world, that's what I would have done. And if you, you find something out there to do it, great, add it to it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you, you know, can use this information. Um, subscribe and hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I'll come out with another video as soon as I have another topic to discuss. Thanks. Have a nice day.